We are now at a stage where countries are reopening, some on a phase-by-phase -phase basis. In Antigua and Barbuda, the government has opened its borders. However, what we knew as normal is no more. COVID-19 still exists and can rear its ugly head at any time. We need to continue to practice social distancing, wear your mask, and follow the rules and guidelines. And most important, do not discriminate. We are coping with COVID-19 in the Caribbean. In the Caribbean, in, in the COVID-19, like leading social distancing. Recorded one spoke to journalists from St. Lucia, Antigua and Barbuda. There is no need for fear or panic. The coronavirus has cast a dark shadow over all of humanity. Apart from the fear of infection and the fear of dying, there is stigma and discrimination. Recovered COVID-19 patient Charmaine tells us how she feels about getting back to work. To put it mildly, um, a doctor said to me, you know when you go back out to work, you're going to be scorned. So I said to him, well, if that's the case, as long as Dr. Seely Thomas says I can go back to work and I sit on the patio of this clinic for the eight hours, that's no problem. I was there. So he said to me, but how, how are you going to deal with the staff? I said, the staff, as frightened as they may be, they should have an understanding of the medical reasons why I got it and, you know, the fact that I've survived it. And they should be aware that before we returned to work, we had to have two negatives, right? Because they were saying that sometimes people, it, it, it comes back down on you. So they insisted that we have two negatives before we return to work. So I didn't feel any way. Dr. Itadis Gibre, representative of the Pan American Health Organization and the World Health Organization of Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean countries, gives us a textbook definition of stigma and discrimination. Social stigma in the context of health uh, is the negative association between a person or group of people who share certain characteristics and a specific disease. In an outbreak like COVID-19, uh, this may mean people are labeled, stereotyped, discriminated against, or treated separately and or experience loss of status because of a perceived link with the disease. Charmaine, however, stands strong. She refuses to let social stigma take control. I still take the public transport, but I make sure I sanitize my hands on entering and on exiting. Um, I wear my mask at all times. I wear my mask walking through town. It is a bit difficult for me. I feel very breathless with the mask on. Um, on two occasions, I had to remove it and stand up and take some deep breaths because it makes me lightheaded. But that's what the government says we have to do, so we need to do it. Um, if we don't follow the rules and regulations, how do we expect to get by? You know, I mean, it's, it's just, you do or you die. It's simple. Antiguan entertainer Menace describes another situation. This time it's his brother a COVID-19 patient in the United States. His brother has since recovered. He was in a hospital five hours away from any family member. You weren't allowed any visitors. The doctors didn't even want to talk to you. When he came in, you could have seen the look on his face where they, they tell him to put on his mask. They didn't want to touch him up too much. He had to, did, he had to do most of the things by himself. And it was a very, uh, I would say, if you're not careful, you would say you feel ashamed to have the virus. You feel like you, you, there's stigma attached to the virus. So now we're even in the phase where he went to do a, another a follow-up test in terms of the, C, the virus is still in the bloodline. They offered him counseling, they, they've offered him um, therapists just for him not to take it upon himself like, why did I get the virus? How come out of everybody, God chose me to get the virus? And there's certain conversations like that that are happening now. 
that people think that they're bad looking or they just they scum, why they get it. So it, it, it's, it's a real thing, it's a real serious thing. When a situation like this takes place, is there a ripple effect? Dr. Gibre weighs in. Such treatment uh, can negatively affect those with the disease, as well as their caregivers, family, friends, and communities. People who don't have the disease but share other characteristics with this group may also suffer from stigma. I'm not afraid of what people may think or how they feel because they will come to the realization at some point in time that I'm no harm to them. Yes, I had it, but I'm now fully recovered. Um, like I said, I still have a little tiredness, but I'm fully recovered because I have two negatives. Um, it, it's, just, it's just that, you know, people, people have this unknown fear, fear of the unknown, where they, they simply just don't understand Psychologist Dr. jean Marcel Ben Dubois adds to the discussion. She says at times we don't even realize we are acting in a discriminatory manner. We don't do it from a conscious level. We do it from a very unconscious level. Anything that we don't understand, and that's the very first basis of stigma and discrimination. It comes from a lack of understanding. Now, when you look at COVID-19, you can see how easy it is for us to stigmatize and discriminate against others because we don't know. There's so many uncertainties around the coronavirus. We simply don't know. Let's look at another perspective. Valerie Gonzalez Barrero shares another scenario. In about March, our office had to be closed because one of our staff was um, in contact with some who had symptoms. And I went home that day and all kind of stuff went to my head. Even though the person wasn't really in the office, it, it bothered me, I was concerned, I was worried, and I decided to self-isolate myself, which I said I kind of miss, didn't miss going out, you know, and I got over it, I prayed a lot, and the gentleman was okay, so I felt better that no symptoms, I mean, you're reading up and everything, and after a while I said, you know what? I'm going to stop watching all this COVID thing. You need to get a break from that. So I was watching comedy. Dr. Dubois puts stigma and discrimination into context for us. She shows us how easy it is to discriminate. We do it so often. We stigmatize. We discriminate others that we don't recognize it. It's commonplace. And it's important to first understand where stigma and discrimination comes from. We all sit within a box. And anyone that's outside of the box, we view them negatively. And that's where the stigma begins, the negative view. Imagine us having a box and our lives being a box. And inside of that box, we keep our families, we keep our friends, we keep our possessions. We keep anything that looks good, that we know, that feels right. Anything that doesn't feel right or we do not know or we do not understand, we keep outside of the box. And what we do is we protect and we treat everything and everyone that's inside the box the same. Now the walls of the box, they're the first things that we do to show discrimination, they're the actions. And that's a big distinction. When we are discriminating against others, we're doing it because we don't understand and they're not inside of our box. But our behaviors, how we react to it shows our perception of them. And that's the whole nature of stigma and discrimination. The four walls of the box and the lid represents how we close ourselves in and protect ourselves from others. So when I use the word protect, it makes you understand why it's so easy for us to discriminate. When it comes to COVID-19, there is a stigma. Um, unfortunately, um, there is one. Even too, if you cough or sneeze right now, you don't even come close to me as a joke. Um, but even for my brother, I want him to be back in Antigua. And we have to be ready to deal with that. Because persons have met me and say, hey, man, it's coming in the room because they have COVID. But they don't know because you have some similarities in, 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 in facial structure, they think it's me. But it's just uh, education is the only way we're going to get over that stigma. But um, I think it's, 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 it's a conversation that needs to be had. It's the same thing that went through the AIDS epidemic, the same thing that is going through cancer and now we're doing it with COVID. Um, we just have to be educated and know how to deal with it because it's there. Valerie believes in patient confidentiality. 
She says community support is necessary. The authorities haven't given out the name of who had, who is recovering or anything like that. I think that's a good thing. I think it's a private thing for family members. It's good that persons come out and say that, well, I had it. But then you just realize it could have been a call. Just a simple thing would have triggered um, COVID-19. And we just have to continue praying for them that they even heal much better. And we, we shouldn't stigmatize because it could be any one of us. As simple as that. I don't think we should stigmatize persons, but just continue to pray for them and support. All of us are affected and continue to be by COVID-19. Some of us have taken the opportunity to make the best of the situation set in front of us. Meet Gino Brown, fondly known as Farmer Brown. As a farmer, um, basically, we have you know, been trying to produce more. Uh, production is paramount at this time. We really need to find a way, you know, to sustain ourselves and Antigua and Barbuda as farmers. So, we've been trying. My mental health, um, you have to show, you know, fearlessness. But of course, in the back of your mind, you know, you're always thinking about, you know, the security of yourself and others. And of course, you know, your, your family, extended family and co-workers as well. So basically, you know, it's, it's been a rocky, rocky ride, but we're coping. Barbershop owner Luke tells us how he has been coping. It's had some effect on me and my business. Before COVID, you know, we were doing pretty well. And like everybody else, we're no different from anybody else. So we are definitely feeling the effects. For some reason, we find it's a bit slower in the business. I'm not sure if customers are kind of skeptical to, to come and, and get the haircut because of the, uh, are they touching in the close distance but it, it has definitely affected us somewhat. Our clients are a pretty decent set of people, so we don't really have a problem with clients following the protocols of the health department. You know, and if anyone who comes here and don't want to follow the guidelines, we just won't accept them. We care about ourselves and we also care about the clients. So this is for, this is for the betterment of all of us. Farmer Brown has seen some positive coming out of this negative. I'm happy to say that I, I, I've seen a surge in terms of you know, persons purchasing local produce. And I hope, I, I don't know if it's because of you know, not be, them not being able to get some of these overseas produce, but I've seen a big change, a major change. And I've seen a respect, no gain for farmers and even backyard farming has been a big part of what we do. So, you know, there is a change and I'm happy to see that. I would definitely leave this message to everyone out there. Value what you have now, value your life, your family members and your loved ones. Because after all, certain things that we, we put so much value to doesn't really have a meaning. Yeah, value, value your loved ones. Coming up on coping with COVID-19 in the Caribbean. At one time we had like hundreds of persons we were following. So we had to um, really get the assistance of a lot of other workers in the Ministry of Health. Antigua Barbuda, we got this. Coping with COVID-19 in the Caribbean is funded by the Pan-American Health Organization.